Oh, what do we got? The 2005 Chevrolet GMC. Uh, let's see here. Get her unlocked. Supposedly the money light's on. The other thing I'm told, Mrs. O told me, by my list. She gave me a list. Oh, where it is. I lost it. Ooh, wow, this thing's fancy. Uh, apparently. Whoa, Chevy Thunder! He has changed the canister, the vent valve, and the gas cap. You have the light remains on. What's this, like a 72 inch screen? Thing's huge. Uh, anyhow, that light's on. It's got the fancy dash. So let's pull her in. See what's up. I'm assuming an EVAP code based on the parts that he's replaced. So it sounds like he has not replaced the purge valve or the fuel tank pressure sensor. I got the all tail hooked up. Uh, it's working a little slow. Uh, I don't know if it's just this truck. Uh, I took and reset it. It's just taking a long time. Uh, but he does have a lot of aftermarket gizmos in here. So, uh, you know, that could be part of it. But we'll see. Uh, all else fails, we'll just go generic and see what's going on here. But uh, let me give this some time to do its thing. So I told you there was something going wonky with his aftermarket stuff. Uh, I didn't let it finish scanning. I only let it scan the engine and the ABS and tire pressure monitor because it was taking forever. And you can see we've got a PO300, which passed, passed, passed. And then the last one that failed was the uh, vent solenoid control circuit. So we have a control circuit code. But then you can see we got a class two communication fault, lost comm with EBCM, lost comm with dash, class two communication high voltage. Uh, we got a class two low and high in the tire pressure system. So probably either the dash or the aftermarket radio is screwing up the uh, class two data network. But it still starts and runs. And the only code that we're really gonna be concerned with is gonna be this vent solenoid control circuit. What we're gonna do though, is we're gonna pop into generic OBD2 and just see if that's the only code and perhaps it has a pending code in there. I'll see how fast this goes. But yeah, I assume there's something screwed up on the data network because it's working so slow. But this should be J1850. So we'll see how long this takes. So we go to the generic side and just as I suspected, we just have two codes, the pending code and the current code for the vent control circuit. So this is probably a broken wire my guess it's gonna be right over there, but what do I know? But let's uh, go see if we're missing power or we're missing the ground side switch. We're gonna go back into OEM data so we have bi-directional controls. So I got the diagram. Here we have the canister vent. This is what we're going after. So we're gonna have one power and then we're gonna have a control wire. And I believe the orange is gonna be the power. And it is, comes right up here to the four, I can't, I don't know, my reader's on, four WS fuse. So that's gonna be hot at all times. And then our white wire that's highlighted across here should be. Uh, there we go. The control, which is right there, the EVAP vent control. So first thing first, let's see what we're missing. We're missing one of the two uh, because to set this code, the PCM is going to be looking uh, for uh, so it's gonna have 12 volts coming in, should go through the solenoid and back out and then to the PCM. And if the PCM doesn't see that 12 volts when it's commanded off, then it assumes there's a circuit issue. So let's, uh, we'll check our fuse first before we pick it up in the air and then we'll go down there and see if we're missing the power or the ground. I got my readers this time. <laughs> getting old baby, getting old. It does say 4WS and it does say underhood fuse box, so. We have to come over here and find the 4WS, which is right there, 4WS. That's the trailer park, and that's 4WS. Supposed to be hot at all times. She's hot on both sides. And before you get burned on this, make sure it has both of its legs. Oh, she's solid corrosion. It has both of its legs. It looks super duper crusty. Perhaps this was the problem the whole time. We'll find out. 
because if we go down there and everything works well now, we'll assume that it was probably missing power. So we do still have power on both sides. Before we even go down on this old girl, we're gonna take, we're gonna use some bi-directional action here. We're gonna go to the vent solenoid. Probably should have done this first to see if we could hear it, because if it's fixed miraculously now, I'll feel like a fool. Oh, she's slow. I'll wait for that to load up. Um, oh, no, there we go, she did. Let's see, listen quietly. No, I don't hear any clicking going on down there. Uh, just while we're right here though, we'll take a quick peek. Fuel tank pressure looks good, should be 1.5. Looks like he's got her filled to the brim. Or not. Wait a minute here. I thought that was at five volts. Oh, fuel. Oh, rear tank. Okay. I was like, what the heck? Okay, never mind. Never mind. Fuel remaining 23%. So, anywho, let's go down there and see if we have power. Okay, she is. There's our <coughs> there's our vent valve. Find something that's magnetic under here. Not completely covered with rust. Uh, so somebody has put a pigtail on it at some point. Let's just kind of quickly inspect that. Looks like some crimp and seal connectors, so these appear to be in good order. Okay, so let's see what we're missing. Oh, I take my specs off here. Let's see if we have power on this wire right here. And we do. So that tells me we don't have any ground side switch here. It's likely situation. So let me turn on the vent solenoid. Well, actually it was on. Right now it's venting. So let's see here if we have anything on this wire, which is gonna be our white wire. We have absolutely nothing. No ghost voltage, no nothing. So that 100% confirms that we have a broken wire. And I'd be curious to know if we're bad before the crimp. I mean, it looks good. Or we're just going to very gingerly poke it here. We're going to have to come back and fix it because this is underneath the car. Ouch. We'll just give that a little poke. If I can. Let's see. Nope, I didn't. I'm not bleeding, and we have nothing here, so it's likely not before the crimp. So let's go back, all the way back to the PCM, and see if we can't find uh, where we can cut the circuit down on us. So our next logical step is to break the system down if we can, as easily as we can. And if you're using Mitchell diagrams, as usual, they suck. Uh, but they're handy because they're colored, so we have to go back to an OEM diagram. Uh, let's see here, we have, it's probably somewhere on here. Here's our vent solenoid right here. So we have our orange wire coming in from our full-time power, which we know we have. We have no control on the white. And here we have a connector, we have the C152 connector. And then we have the connector of the PCM. So if we can get to this, and not the PCM, PCM's covered, I think the C152 connector is covered also, because I think it's under that fuse box over there. I've got the pinout for C152, and uh, right here, so pin F, which also agrees with this one, pin F says on there, so pin F, white evap canister vent solenoid control so what we need to do is we need to get to this connector uh, we need to find pin f and see do we have control here or don't we because that'll narrow down our section either our wire is bad from here to here or from here to here so we need to find out which way to chase it and uh, i gotta double check i'm pretty sure that connector is under that fuse box i said to go help josh foolishly foolishly took on a volkswagen Gosh, I hate those cars. So we're gonna take this little guy off. Set this to the side. I 
and then we will pull our lid off from this. Got one connector here. Get that out of there. And then this should come right off, exposing our connector. Usually exposing the mouse nest. I've got no sniffer. So I don't know if we're gonna find a mouse or smell a mouse, I don't smell it. Uh, the connector I think is underneath our fuse box here. You can kind of pick your poison with this one, folks. Um, whether or not you want to pull the covers off the ECM and test right there and or come to here first. We chose to come here because I think it's a little bit easier I can say just kind of pick your poison. I think it's this connector right here with the purple tape on it. Um, let's uh, figure this out. Man, the uh, plethora of YouTube callers today has hit the stupid level. You can hear one leaving a message right now. I'm gonna have to be a little more belligerent on my message <laughs> to say don't, don't call, don't leave a message. Uh, okay, let me get a T-pin. Wore my other hat today, so I'm my T-pin in it. Um, and I'm not trying to sound like a prick or ungrateful, but logistically, it doesn't work out when YouTube people come here. Just, I'll be completely honest and very blunt, it just doesn't work. Um, they usually travel a long ways. They don't understand that I am not a miracle worker. I cannot fix your intermittent problem that happens once every seven months for 30 seconds at a time. I'm not trying to sound bitchy, it's just, I just do work for my local people and that's it, and that's how it's gonna be. Let's see. So we're gonna back probe into this. And what we should have here, because I plugged the solenoid back in underneath, is we should have power we should have 12 volts because with our scan tool uh, it is not turned on currently let me just double check that here it should be not venting so the PCM should not be pulling it to ground wait for our scan tool to catch up make sure that uh, our prober here is good we'll touch our t-pin and we don't have a beep we don't have power coming up here however I do have a voltage reading now um, zero volts, 0 0.03, so we have some ghost voltage. So what we want to do is we're going to go to the driver test on this power probe. And right now it puts voltage at the tip. So right now we have 13.8 volts. And when it goes to ground, it should indicate to us a ground. So right now we still have 13.76 volts at the tip. Okay. And then if I go turn on, Let's get, turn on the solenoid. Let me hold this here. We're probed into the control wire. When I turn this on, it should go to ground. I'll turn it back off, back on, and back off. So that tells us the PCM is good. So the engine control module is good. And it is good wiring up until this point. So from this point to the back of the vehicle, at some point along the way, our wire is broke. 100%, there's no other possibility of what it can be. The sucky part is, is this truck is rotted out big time underneath, very cobbled up where the wire runs. Um, the frame's rotted in half, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, so I don't want to be fiddling with the wires and stuff there because the brake lines and stuff are just, everything's on the verge of literally breaking in half. And the problem is, if it breaks in half on your watch, the customer somehow will feel that you're responsible. So, what we do is we're going to try something else here. We're going to take, oops, stop, shut that off for a second. Uh, let me just take a quick peek here. Maybe, maybe we'll do the uh, get lucky here. That comes out. I just want to see which wire it comes out on. Just out of curiosity, I think it goes into that big main harness there. It goes into this harness. What we should do is unconnect the connector, disconnect the connector, 
just to make all dang sure. Let's see, nope, we were on the output side of it anyways. I was gonna say, we wanna make sure that we're on the output side going to the back of the vehicle, which is this harness here, which we were on. So we were already on the output side. So we know that the connector is good. The connection in it is good. We gotta click that back down. We can throw the cover back on this. And then we're gonna very carefully give it a visual inspection. Um, try not to touch anything that's gonna, I see a metal bracket down there might be rubbing through on. Um, we're looking for an open, we're not looking for a short. So we're looking for a wire that's completely uh, corroded and broken through. So the other thing you could do is where it comes into here, into this bunch, uh, we could just cut it and do an overlay, which was probably the best option um, at this point. So let's see what we can do. So this is the kind of stuff you're dealing with. So these are all your brake lines. Uh, unfortunately, this is the harness that possesses the broken wire. So we just kind of look through here, like I'd really like to touch it up in here where it goes under the cab, uh, but you just don't dare. Um, you touch any of this, all these brake lines are gonna blow. And then we're just gonna kind of give it a looky. You know, these brake lines are all compression fittings. Like none of this will pass inspection anyway. Well, in my shop it won't, but like I say, the frame is all rotted out here. You know, they cover it up with silicone, but you just, you know, frames clearly broke. And toast. Um, but there's uh, lots of shops. <laughs> if you need his number, I'll give you the guy's number. But just trying to see, I mean, we already got some wires kind of cobbled back through here. Um, you know what, guess what? I think I see it just standing right here. Look at that, it's right out in the open. <laughs> Ding dong, gotta fix this without even doing anything fancy. Ready? Here comes the money shot, baby. Ah, there it is. Oh, we got lucky. How lucky are we? I should have looked at that a little closer when I uh, when we were down here the first time. So let's see if it's any good from here forward. Hopefully there's not more than one bad spot. So I'm still doing the driver test. We still have the 13.8 volts at our tip. Uh, we're gonna take, I'm gonna turn the vent so like on. So I should, I should audible tone here, it should pull it to ground. And it does. I'll turn it back off. Fan freaking tastic. So uh, <laughs> sometimes you just I know when to say when folks, sometimes you gotta get rid of the truck. So let's see here, we'll take and move that portion of the truck. Uh, I'm just gonna cut those out. We're gonna move them both back. And we're gonna call it a day and let them go to the sticker shop. Can you guys still see? Can everybody still see? Hopefully. Alarm's probably right in the way. I'm sorry for complaining, people. I try not to be ungrateful. But sometimes, sometimes, I don't even know what I'm gonna say. Sometimes I get grumpy. I'm not trying to be grumpy, my guys. It's just the way the cookie crumbles someday. Initially when I started the YouTube, I tried helping the YouTube people when they would you don't want to come here and get stuff fixed. Let me go get some connectors. But it's just never, we're getting kind of intimate here, right behind you. Uh, it just never worked out well. It's, it's difficult to explain. Um, I don't think I'm a bad mechanic, but I think YouTube gives people a false sense of who a person really is, perhaps. I mean, I am who I am. I mean, I'm a nice guy, but I can't walk on water, folks, which unfortunately some YouTube folks that call here have that 
perception of me in their mind. Like, oh, this guy can fix anything. Well, no, truth be told, I can't. Everybody's always like, oh, you're the best. And the truth is, I'm not. I just happen to be a guy who makes videos. There's hundreds and thousands of mechanics that are as good and truth be told way better than I'll ever be. They just don't make YouTube videos. So, I guess all that to say that yeah, I don't work on out of town people's, you know, I mean if somebody's down at the gas station, they broke down, they're from out of town, yeah, I take care of them, but. Other than that, negative. It's just too much of a pain in the hoo-hoo. I'm a pretty laid back dude. I don't like the high pressure. Okay, let's heat shrink those bad boys now. Oh, here, it should click now. Good, now we can drive it, run through a drive cycle and have a million leak codes show up. <laughs> Wait for the babies to cool down a little bit here and I'll stick the loom back over it. There she is, folks, all put back together. Fancy. All right, folks, got the fuse box back together, got the brace back in. Uh, this guy's gonna have to take and drive it now to run it through a drive cycle and see you know, how many million other codes come up. I see the codes were cleared before it came because it had two monitors still that weren't set. Um, but this will at least fix the circuit problem and then you know, on to the next one. But obviously something in the radio in the instrument cluster or something has, uh, is putting too much voltage on the CAN2 or the CAN2. The class two data network uh, on this truck, which is what it runs on the J1850 protocol. Uh, so it's got something kind of wonky there, but it still communicates, can still run a drive cycle. So I'm not gonna go chasing that down. Um, he just wanted that EVAP portion of it fixed. So we did that, we came, we saw, we conquered. Um, and again, folks, I don't wanna sound ungrateful or like a prick, but uh, I do thoroughly enjoy making the YouTube videos. I like posting our videos and you know, you guys seem to get a lot from them and uh, you know, that's the avenue that we take. So unfortunately I cannot take the literally hundreds of phone calls that come in where people just want free advice or know what parts change. It's, it's just too difficult. So I just don't. And then the same for bringing their vehicles here. It's just, it's way too difficult. Logistically, it doesn't work. Um, when you drive five, six hours and you know, I look at your car and you need a part and the parts, you know, a week away, you know, then what? Nobody really thinks beyond just the, the day. And, and to be honest with you folks, I'm just a normal Joe Schmo, just a plain old schmuck working in a shop with dirty hands in a small town. I'm not the Lord Jesus himself. I cannot walk on water. I can't turn water into wine. I fix junk cars. That's what I do. And I'm not the best at it. So anyhow. Thanks for watching. Don't mean to be cynical on this video, but it's just a matter of facts. Hope you liked this video. If you didn't, or you wanna tell me why you didn't, go in the comment section. Way well, down there, subscribe to Insty, the Facebook. You guys know what to do. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.